Examples of factorising a quadratic expression. I've got four quadratic expressions here, and I've got a special case over here we're going to look at at the end. Now, the key to factorising quadratics is knowing that what factorising means is to put brackets in. With quadratics, that means we're going to go for a double bracket, and it's always of if this is just an x squared, it's always of the form x and x, and then we've got plus or minus a number and plus or minus a number here, depending on the combinations of the things that are going on here. Now, you should, if you've done this before, uh, remember that these two numbers here multiply to give you the plus 12 and they add to give you the plus 7. Okay, so we've got to think of combinations that multiply to give me 12. So quite often it's a good idea to write down all the factors of 12, factor pairs of 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and then start to think about which ones will add to give you 7. Clearly that's 3 and 4, so this is just going to be plus 3 and plus 4. Okay, and if you want to see why, try multiplying out that bracket using whatever method you use for that, and you will see that uh, you will end up by um, adding the 3x and the 4x to get 7x, and 3 times 4 will be 12. Now different combinations we have of this, we could have a minus on the end. Uh, if you see a minus here, um, you don't have to be able to do this, but it helps to speed things up if you know the combinations, the possibilities that can happen. So we've got essentially the same numbers here, um, but they're going to multiply to give you minus 12. That means one of them must be negative. And then when we add them, we get plus x. So that means that the bigger of the two numbers is a positive number. So when we're looking at our combinations, 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4, we know if the middle bit is plus, then the negative number is going to be one of the small numbers. And which of these combinations add to give me plus x? Well, it's, mi it's minus 3 and plus 4. So that would be minus 3 and this would be plus 4. Now we've got uh, a minus and a minus. So that tells me that because it's minus 12, that I've got one negative, one positive. But this time, the bigger of the two is negative. And again, when I add them together, I'm going to get minus x or minus 1. So it's this pair again, but this time it's the, it's the 4 that's negative and the 3 that's positive. So we've got x plus 3 and x minus 4. And the last combination is where there's a negative in the middle and a plus here. The only way you can get this is if both sets of numbers are negative. So you could have minus 1, minus 12, minus 2, minus 6. Because when you multiply two negatives, you get a positive minus 3, minus 4, and then we add them together. If I had minus 13 here, it would be these, this pair. If I had minus 8, because when I add them I get minus 8, it would be that pair, 2 and 6. And because it's minus 7, it's minus 3. It's x minus 3 and x minus 4. Now there is a special case of this, where we call the difference of two squares. Very important uh, case, and it comes up time and time again in mathematics. Um, if you can spot this, you can save you a lot of time because this has um, a form where you've got x plus a number and then x minus a number and that number is the same number because the middle bit, because we've got x squared here plus no x minus 16. So the middle bit is when we add them together here we add them together to get 7, here to get 1 and here to get minus 1 here it gets 0, so they must be the same number and what number multiplied by itself is 16? Well, that has to be 4. Okay, so when you have, see this sort of question, where you've got x squared minus a square number, you do x plus the square root of that square number and x minus the square root of that square number. That's a quick way of working out those ones.